Shut up and sit down. Welcome back, everyone. I uh, just wanted to give a quick update on the latest version of the Track Builder Helper. Uh, if you have downloaded version 1.1.3, uh, there is a new editor for your shader files for your models. Uh, same thing is already here inside of the textures. This will create all your SHD files for you. Uh, but for your models, you still have to do it uh, by hand. So I went ahead and created a quick uh, little window that you can use. So you can either come up here to the tools, go to SHD editor. Or if you already have a project open, you can come down to the tools over here. Go ahead and open that up and it will automatically load the last folder that you had used in this editor. Um, and it will list all of the DDS or the TGA files within that folder that you select. Uh, if you want to select the new one, just come over to the browse, open the window, browse for the folder you want to view these uh, images in and you're good to go. I'm just going to maximize this window. Uh, so what we have here again is it's displaying all the DDS and TGA files. If your file already has a related uh, SHD or shader file, I'm just going to call it, it's going to have a checkbox here, a check mark. Uh, it shows you the size of the file. Just for comparison, you can see that this uh, TGA for building one is uh, about 12 megabytes and the equivalent DDS file is 2.7 megabytes. So that's why we use DDS files a lot uh, when you're trying to save space on on your package of your uh, packaging of your track, the, the final track size. Uh, it doesn't really help with performance or anything um, because I think inside the game uh, it does a little bit of unboxing and uncompressing of things. Uh, so again, it's just for your file sizes. Good thing to check out. Um, back to the shader file though. So if we go over to this building one, uh, DDS, when I click on it, it is going to load uh, the shader file. So if we would actually go and look on the, the file system, you open the SHD file. This is, uh, what it has. It has the normal map and it has the spec map, uh, settings there. And if we're up here in the editor, uh, just like back on the track project uh, for your textures, uh, you can turn off the normal map. Um, and we see this is broken right now. It's not going to allow you to save because you're also using the spec map and it's telling you to use the normal map. Well, the normal map's turned off. So if we also uh, turn that off, it'll say, well, now you need the spec map. So let's just go. I'm just going to go and pick a random one. Uh, it doesn't matter. This is just for uh, demonstration purposes. And then now we'll see we're all good. My spec map is showing. The bump map is turned off. If I turn back on the normal map, uh, there we go. And see, we're not, it's actually using the same one because I have it set to the same normal map, but we can turn this off and it'll go back to just use automatic. It's going to default use the alpha channel in your normal map. Uh, and if you want a reflection map, uh, again, you can set all that up. Uh, let me go down to one that already has a... Uh, already has the reflection map. So this is some water, uh, has a spec map and it has the, oh, and this one is weird because it, again, there we go. Um, the parsing isn't perfect because I can't really tell exactly everything that's going on the way you set up. So if you see some weird things, uh, just play with the settings. Again, it's going to mainly be between your normal and spec maps. Uh, this one, I didn't have a normal map for the water. I just had my reflection and uh, was using the spec map on it. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, when you want to save it, uh, so let's edit this. We're going to change the shininess. You can see it's updating the preview. Say I didn't want to, I want to reset it. Okay, let's go back to normal. It just reloaded it how it was. Uh, let's go, I'm going to set it down to one. We'll save that, come back off and when it reloads, yep, still one. I'm going to put this back to 12 and again, we're not using that. We're going to save that. Um, and let's see, uh, if I wanted to delete this for some reason, if I didn't want to go into the file system, uh, it's just going to ask me, are you sure you want to delete it? 
I don't want to delete this one. It's one I'm using for a track, so I'm just going to cancel that. Um, and that's that's basically it. If I want to create a new one, come up here. Let's go to this Action Arena DDS. Do a normal map. We're going to select a normal map. We're just going to select this one. And we will do a spec map. We're going to use that. And we'll just save it. Once I save it, you now have the icon for the shader file. Again, you can edit it. Uh, we're going to delete it. So, yep, we want to go ahead and delete that. All right, it's gone. That is pretty much it. So this, I hope, helps somebody um, when you're working on your models, just keeping, uh, trying to wrangle them and not having to create your shader files, even though they're really easy to create manually. Uh, again, this, this helps you making sure that you are selecting the right types of files, the right types of images. If, you requ if it requires an alpha channel, such as when you select, this, uh, select your spec map, and if I try to select something that doesn't have an alpha channel, it's going to tell me this spec map requires an alpha channel. Select a file with a valid alpha channel. You must save your image as 32-bit for the alpha channel to save with it. Uh, a lot of people get tripped up by this. Um, they said, I did put an alpha channel in it. Yeah, but you didn't save it as 32-bit. So again, this program tells you, tries to help you out, give you as much information so you're not spinning your wheels uh, what you need to do. But again, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helps it out and, uh, catch you guys on the next one.